This video deals with making a linen string for a primitive bow. I made a video about a few weeks ago. It's a Viking Hedeby style bow that was probably made about between 800 and 1060 AD. The bow is tied on the bottom without a knock and the string using V50 Daycron would slip up. So I had to use rawhide to keep it in place. It shot about 155 feet per second, and I was interested if I could make a linen bow string that wouldn't break, uh, holding 63 pounds, and also uh, see if it would stay on the bow. The starting point was um, using linen thread and finding that it broke at about 14 pounds if I, I pulled on it using the scale. I decided to use two bundles of 10 threads each that were 106 inches long. The secret for making a better bowstring that would hang on was that the linen isn't as slippery as the Dacron V50. And also I made it 10 inches longer, which gave me a lot more string that I could use to tie on the bottom of the bow for more friction. I made a video of how I made the bow string, but the lighting was too dark in Utah when I was working on the bow. And so I'll post a, another video of that later. You can see the string here, it weighed about 15 grams when it was done, it looked pretty nice. When I put it on the bow, it would hold on the bottom with no problem. You can see it's a little bit thicker than the B50 Dacron string. And I tied it on the bottom where there was no knock using first the double half hitch and then linked double half hitches to give a secure knot that holds really well without slipping. There wasn't a lot of stretch in the string. This is when I very first put it on the bow. At six inches of brace height, it moved to about four inches. I stretched the string a couple of times and it, it stayed in place. I could adjust the brace height by just twisting the string. I, I tested the bow shooting at a target at 45 feet away, 15 meters. This is the very first time I shot the bow at full draw with this string. I was a little bit worried about it breaking. I, I pulled it a little bit to test it. And I'm aiming at a cardboard box that's stuffed with uh, plastic packing material, so it's a very tight target. And the first shot moves the box by about three inches. I'll show you the target in a second. And I'm aiming at a blue logo on the box that I'm shooting at. In comparing the bow, these, this is done at 5,000 feet altitude. And I tested it before, at basically at sea level, so the air is quite a bit thinner because the arrows do shoot a little bit faster. And I'm not sure if that's because of the string or, or because of the difference in the density of the air. So it's about 159 feet per second for that shot, right in the logo that I was shooting at. The next shot went slightly to the side of the box. You'll see in a second why, because the, the logo is very close to the side of the box. That shot was dead on, 159 feet per second. One difference in the traditional string is it's 
much rougher on your fingers if you're going to shoot without a glove and the string is thicker Miss slightly again and the arrow goes back about 10 yards past the target And that one was 159 feet per second again. And there you can see the three hits. They're in the logo, we're very close to it. So I wanted to see if how it shot for distance. I have arrows that are marked at 26 and a half inches for the draw length, but they're 32 inches long. And this actually ended up being kind of a problem because it's kind of hard to see the mark when I'm pulling and sort of a distraction for not getting it quite to the right draw length. So I wasn't very happy with these shots. The bow was set up to draw 26 and a half inches because that's the length of the arrows that were found close to the bow. So it, it's doubtful that the Vikings were drawing to the ear the way people do with war bows or English long bows. More likely they're shooting from the chest or, or some other style. Shooting from the chest is illustrated in, in lots of ancient paintings of bows used in the early Middle Ages. So it, it might be more accurate, but no one really knows. If you listen in these outside videos, you can hear geese, egrets, sandhill cranes and herons and, and probably other birds if, if you're good at identifying them. This was filmed about a, three quarters of a mile from the, the Bear River in Utah, which is a stopover point for millions of birds on their way as they migrate north and south each spring and, and fall. My favorite are the sandhill cranes that you can hear calling to each other. This was the only night I got a real chance to shoot when I was in Utah. Most of the other nights it was too windy or raining too hard or storming to walk in the mud. And so I, I just got a few shots with this. I should have practiced a bit more before I filmed. The bow would definitely work for a, a hunting bow if you were, were an ancient Scandinavian hunting reindeer or Norwegian red deer certainly could put one down easily at, at 20 yards. There you can see the arrows, They're not tightly grouped at all. They usually shoot a lot better. And they fell between about 105 and 120 yards.
right over at the side, if you can see the bent fence post, that's the 120 yard marker. So that's how I know how far I'm shooting. This is a video that I recorded in November in 2017. It's, it's raining and snowing in this video. There's less wind here slightly coming from the west. And this is with a English longbow, but it's only 45 pounds. The difference is the arrows are arrows that I've made maybe like two dozen arrows of the same kind. And then after shooting it, a target about 105 yards and 140 yards, I've selected out the arrows that actually shoot the best with the bow. So it's, it's not really a fair comparison because these arrows are, are matched to perform well. I have no idea if 140 yards is very good with a, an English longbow, 45 pounds. It's probably not. You certainly hear people shooting a lot further, and with war bows, people shoot about 220 yards. I don't think they shoot that far with a 45 pound bow. So these arrows are different. They're only about 450 grain. And these arrows in, in this video, I notice, actually have short fletchings on them. So I'll show an example of an arrow in a second, but the, the flex, fletchings are actually a little bit shorter. So these arrows went about 140 yards. I didn't get the chance to film shooting this arrow, but this is a replica arrow I made that's about 530 grains. It's made out of birch. And it went 141 yards. The difference is it's made to be 26 and a half inch draw weight. And it was much easier just to draw it back and shoot it without worrying about the draw length of the arrow of how far I was pulling it. It was also on the first shot of the night when I went out, so... Quite easy to shoot the this, this 63 pound bow. For me, 60 pounds is about as high as I want to shoot. I, I don't get to shoot a lot, and uh, that's a fair amount to pull. Nothing impressive, though. You can see one of the lighter arrows and one of the 550 grain arrows that I were spined for 60 pounds that I shot earlier. You see it's quite a bit shorter. And then you can see this arrow that's um, made by tying the point into the slot with sinew and tying on the feathers and it has a self knock. You, you can see the draw length is about 26 and a half inches. And I was surprised the point of this bow let it fly as far as, as the other arrows. Here I'm showing the weight of a representative arrow from each of the three kinds of arrows I've used in this video. Arrows that were 550 grains, flying for 60 pounds, commercially available area, arrows ended up being about 500 to 550 grains. The homemade arrows out of poplar ended up being about 400 to 450 grains. These are the arrows that I shot about 140 yards with the 45 pound bow. And the last is one of the arrows that I made for the 63 pound had a bee bow out of perch. This arrow went 141 yards with that bow. 
weighed about 535 grains. So, all in all, the bow works pretty well. It's pretty obvious that the thick Viking tips slow the bow down, but it, it shoots well. The string worked well to use natural materials. In upcoming videos, I'll talk a little bit about traditional bow strings and how humans maybe have bow string making in their DNA. I'm going to show working on a bow using just a hand axe and uh, a draw knife to make a Shoshone Indian bow. And I'm going to have some video from a trip to Iceland that will also have some more Viking tools and weapons and some places from the sagas if you're interested more in history of medieval Scandinavia. Thanks for watching. Tune back in later.